Gosh, I'll be like everybody else who makes YouTube videos and say, let's get started. Uh, this is not going to make a lot of sense to people who haven't been following along on the website. I'll throw a link in this description, but uh, really there's years of stuff here behind this. Anyway, did some running yesterday, and in between arcs and smoke, I got some very interesting measurements. Um, and what we're looking at here is a plot of Q, which is sort of uh, output power over input power. Although I'm quick to say these are completely arbitrary units. We're still very, very, very not break even yet. Okay. But our normal best Q at our best output was on this scale about 10. And you'll notice here that we're seeing numbers around 40. Uh, and also, at, for us, very low input currents. We would normally run 12, 20 milliamps uh, at 50 kilovolts. And here we only ever really hit about 45, not quite 45 kilovolts. And um, you know, our best Q was at 2 or 3 milliamps. And the reason for that was the gas pressure is much lower than we have normally been able to run at. And I find it very interesting that as we have less gas, and therefore probably less non-fusion scattering, and probably oh, some other stuff that I'll get to in text on the website, um, that our Q goes way up, uh, which is kind of the opposite of, you know, the turning it up to 11, put in more fuel, blah, 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 higher pressure and all that baloney. Uh, that, you know, one always tells people like me who are doing this. But like, like I say, you know, as soon as the gas pressure was up, see in the red version here, it's, this is where the higher pressure is. The Q is low, okay? Now we can, um, if we want to, <laughs> we can play other games. We can say... Let's look at the uh, um, just the raw output for this run and uh, replot and click on this so we get it back. And okay, in this case, 980 neutrons per uh, minute means um, about a, I mean. On this count, 980 means a million neutrons per second. Uh, so we're really getting up there in the output. It's just kind of surprising at the low gas pressures. Um, and the output is staying about the same. You know, as we run up the gas pressure, the out, you know, we're not seeing a curve down here um, at all. Now, the discrete nature of this, you know, this is in bands, right? And the reason for that is I'm only counting uh, for short intervals, like a tenth of a second per per dot here, as it were. And uh, you can only count, you know, one, zero, two, three, four, some integer number of counts during a tenth of a second. And uh, there's no in-between, so that's why there's no in-between on this plot. Um, but, so, uh, this is really interesting. This is, the high Q in this case is coming from some more neutrons than usual. We've hit six, you know, what would be 6,000 on this scale before at really high powers and things are trying to melt. But um, uh, the real news is that we're doing it with like sort of no power input. Nothing's getting hot uh, that shouldn't get hot. Uh, the grid's not, you know, getting incandescent and all this other stuff. And that we're able for some reason to run at lower power. But the, uh, our, the real deal is that, uh, and I, at least I think the real deal, you know, we're still doing analysis here, is um, that we are, um, we were actually having a little bit of arcs. And the thing that started down this, this, started us down this rabbit hole in the first place was we noticed anything, this is back to Q, <clears throat> anything that knocked this guy off equilibrium, the, the thing all the fuser amateurs go for on purpose, uh, made the Q go up. And here, because of some experimental changes, I did have all the RF resonance circuits and all this other baloney in, in, the, in the chain, but turned off. Uh, we still had its reactances. Um, 
but I had some micro arcs because the, the new setup isn't completely thrashed out and you know cleaned up and, and there are some places where the clearances are a little close. And so as it shows on the web page, I'm going to link here. Um, we were getting some little disturbances that were causing uh, ringing in the tuned circuits. And that's when we were seeing all these huge amounts of neutrons or largely when we were seeing that. So we find that very interesting. So we've been trying to find out, you know, Okay, so we know pushing it off equilibrium for a little while makes it more efficient for a little while. And so for the last year or two, I've been working on, so how can I deliberately push it off equilibrium to get the exact right thing that it likes, right? You know, the, the thing where the ions are created at the right place in the potential well and they focus to the focus and, you know, a whole bunch of other parameters that, that should make this work. And uh, we've kind of come full circle in that uh, most of the things that I have tried have not worked as well as this sort of accidental uh, um, twerking of the, uh, uh, of the high voltage supply uh, via some uh, not quite full BAP arcs, you know, little ticks, you know, and, and uh, sort of corona noise and, and whatnot. And this is not noise getting into my detectors. We're way past that here. We've been working on this for a long time. But um, this is interesting input, and um, you know, hopefully the sun will come out. If not, I'll run a backup generator, and I'll get some more data today. Uh, now that we have, uh, I won't freeze to death in the process. So I guess that's uh, all for now.